goal here is for every taxpayer that lives in the school district to understand well, what does this do to my taxes? What, how is this going to impact me? So the actual right tax rate is made up of a lot of different sources. For example, on the sample tax bill on the right, you can see that the town, vocational institution, county, and school all make up the total tax rate. And you can, the T, town, V, vocational, C, county, S, school, you can see there on the far left. Um, it really, and when you look at this, you know, and, and what impact, if my property taxes go up, what part of that is from the school? Well, really the biggest impact to your property tax going up is your property value going up. Uh, there's very few of these things that, uh, that are on the screen that are impacted by the school on a, that are different year to year. So for example, when you look at the T60, and this is an actual uh, tax statement from someone that, and this is, a, I would say, a majority of the people living in the school district. Uh, you live in Oklahoma City, you live in Canadian County, and you get your kids go to Mustang School. So that, that's what this situation is. Now it'd be a little bit different for somebody that lives in the city of Mustang. Uh, you definitely wouldn't see Oklahoma City on there. So this is a breakdown for somebody in that situation. So if you slide down to the Mustang, the general and the building, that, those numbers, the millage, 36.31 and 5.19, those are dictated by the state. We have no control over what those millage rates are. Now the millage rates are the same for uh, the districts, all districts. The dollars are different depending on where, where you live. So the, the dollar amount is different, but the millage, the tax rate, is set by the state. So then we're down to the sinking fund, and this is what we're really talking about here. We're talking about when we have a bond issue, this is the piece of the tax picture that is impacted by, bond, by, your, by the bond issue, would be the sinking fund. And on the right, you can see that this is actually 2022. It came in at 25.79, and just as a reminder, our target since 2009 has always been 28, that we, we target 28 in all of our calculations, but you won't know the actual until a year from, from that point. So it's a projection. In 11 of the 12 years, when we have uh, done, when we've looked at the uh, past, 11 of the 12 years, the actual has been less than the target. So it's always we're targeting 28, but the actual is coming in lower, and that creates a small deficit, and we'll talk about why moving to a different phased approach will help capture that delta between the targeted and the actual. So to kind of really expand on this, where, where, where does this put Mustang? So what Dr. Pittenger is going to do is take you through some comparison of millage and So let's take a look at tax rates among school districts across the state. So in this graphic, you see school districts that are in the same size or close to our size or in the same proximity as Mustang. That's where the list is, is compiled from. A historical view on the left for 2021-2022 shows Mustang with a millage or a tax rate in the bottom third of the schools listed. It's actually 19 out of 27 listed to be exact. This ranking is with a millage target of 28 mills, which we've been below, as Superintendent Bradley said, in 11 of the past 12 years. So our target's been 28. Our tax burden has come in below 28, 11 out of the last 12 years. Considering the growth in Mustang over the past decade, our district has focused on maintaining a lower tax burden for our patrons. We are now at a point where the growth has accelerated, creating a situation where our tax target cannot keep up with the growth. Should this bond issue pass and our target move to 30 mills, we would move from 19th to number nine. And that shows you on the right, the unofficial 22-23 numbers. Moving to ninth would barely put us at the top third of district tax rates like us. The source of this data comes from the Oklahoma State Department of Education's updated estimate of needs statewide report for 21-22. It's also important to note that several school districts in the, uh, this last uh, few years or even coming up in the, the near future uh, may have bond issues as well, which would change uh, potential millage rates impacting their tax rate. Next is capital investment per student. <coughs> I don't know, there's something about that K-12 
kid I just like. I want to go make whatever it is he's making because he's looking like he's having some fun there. That looks like a STEM project to me. So the next slide is, it's a new metric. It's, it's a metric that, uh, that trying to, to put apples to apples when we're talking about a uh, school district and taking into account unique enrollment and millages is looking at the far right column is the investment per student. So just as a note that this is last year's 2021. This year's we've added 561 students so our actual millage is lower. So right there it's 2602 but 21, 22 school year and we've shown you the 22, 23 millage rate so that way if you're saying wait a minute there's a different number this is last year's information. And the reason for that is not everything's been reported from other districts. So this is based on local funding from community approved bonds, not inclusive of state federal funding. As student enrollment increases, our per student investment decreases unless we increase our millage target to capture those funds. So just kind of in a, in a nutshell, what this shows is where if you just look at Mustang, what that's saying is just bond dollars, we spend $1,290 per student of using bond dollars. And so then you can see it, it takes into account a district's millage and enrollment and then comes up with a standard um, number of what they spend in bond dollars per student. So if we were to look, uh, this bond issue were to pass, we were to move to 30, you would see that we would be right above Moore and just below Muskogee in the amount of uh, investment per student and the amount of bond money we have per student in Mustang. So I, I say this not, not, to, not as an indictment at all. This is not a, hey Mustang, we can do better. It's not that at all. It's just how when you have a growing district like Mustang and you increase the enrollment, that is gonna divide the money by uh, a, a number and it's gonna reduce your investment per student. So as we grow, that number is gonna go down lower. But as we grow, we have more students that we need to maintain the level of uh, uh, facilities and instructional uh, that, that our kids are used to. What we're advocating is to implement this phased student investment plan starting with this bond election on February 14th, 2023 with an increase in the millage target to 30. So being able to, we've said over and over about how 28 is no longer able to keep up with growth. Here is a good example, and I've, I've also talked about how recurring dollars are essential. So in 2012, target of 28, we were able to have X amount of dollars per year, okay? So it's, it's roughly around uh, 1.9, let's say, that of what we get per year now off of the 2012 bond issue. If we were to keep this at 28, we would see uh, a decrease in recurring dollars to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. So at a if bond issue at 28, we would have significantly less dollars per year to take care of safety security, to take care of academics, to take care of athletics, fine arts. So we would have a serious reduction in money per year from funds. If we stay, if we move to a target of 30, this will keep us at it's probably a few hundred thousand more than what the 1.9 is, but we would be able to at least maintain the quality uh, and the attention that we have currently to our to those safety, security, transportation, all those things that are affected by uh, recurring dollars. But what does that mean to the average Mustang resident? So what we're talking about is a two mil increase going from 28 to 30. And since we cannot account for every single per every resident's uh, home value situation, what we did was we came up with a median home value in the Mustang School District area. And that came out to about $225,333. And so that impact on that home by a potential impact of two mills would be $4.34 per month. Really, what is the key takeaway here? We're growing fastest at the high school level and at the elementary. We urgently need that space. Safety is on everyone's mind and we can never be safe enough. In this phase, Mustang Elementary gets the connecting corridor. This lays the ground for 2027 projects. For many of our youngest, the highlight of the day is the playground. Not to say that our teachers are not wonderful, but it's kind of hard to compete with monkey balls. <laughs> the equipment needs to be re relevant and safe. 
We want that safety to begin with the first interaction we have with our kiddos on a daily basis, and that's on the bus. Retiring older buses and upgrading bus safety equipment is an ongoing need. Recurring dollars are the lifeblood of any school district from an operational perspective. We need those dollars to stay warm in the winter, cool in the summer, interact in a technologically connected world where programs and opportunities change the lives of kids, giving them hope for a better future as we keep on moving with a little momentum.